I'm Carolyn Grosh. I'm the curator of collections and exhibitions at the Western Carolina University Fine Art Museum. And I'm also the curator of the exhibition Curious Terrain, WNC from the Air, which was organized by the WCU Fine Art Museum and traveled this fall to the Bascom Center for the Visual Arts in the Highlands, um, where it is currently on view through January 9th, 2021. The exhibition of aerial photographs was made possible by a generous grant from the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina with funding from the Rick and Bridget Eckerd uh, Charitable Fund, Lipscomb Family Foundation, and the Fund for the Arts of the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina. So we are very grateful to them um, and our partners at the Bascom who helped support this project. Curious Terrain was developed in conjunction with last year's campus theme at Western Carolina University, which was environment and sustainability. And it was really meant to give us a new perspective on our built environment here in uh, Western North Carolina. So a project really specific to this region. And it was also an opportunity to find out how patterns of land use uh, reflect wider trends throughout the United States, um, but also an opportunity to discover what is unique about how we use and impact the land here in our region. So to do this, we hired uh, aerial photographer Alex McLean, who has been uh, taking aerial photographs for over 45 years, to uh, take images of the seven westernmost counties of North Carolina. So we really kept it focused on uh, Haywood, Jackson, Swain, Macon, Graham, Clay, and Cherokee counties. And it's important to note that all the images in the show were taken from an airplane. So this was not drone photography. Um, this was a question that came up early in the project. I had asked Alex um, what he saw as the benefit to taking images from a plane versus using some kind of drone technology, which is certainly becoming more widespread. And his response to that was that you can really cover more territory in an airplane, um, you can gain a higher altitude, and then you can also really explore an entire region. And that's what we wanted, was to learn more about our region as a whole. So Alex visited three times in uh, September, October, and December 2019. And it was really important for him to come back um, on several occasions um, so that he was able to capture images from different seasons, uh, different harvest times, uh, you know, in different lighting and weather conditions. So it was really important that he be able to kind of explore and return to certain locations and sites at different times of the year. Um, and to some extent, you can see it reflected in the images. His September images, which, which was the first set of images, um, they're a little, little hazier, a little foggier, the colors are a little more muted. Um, and that was really um, a result of the, the weather conditions at that time. So it was important for Alex to come back on several occasions. And he ended up taking over 2,000 images during the project, um, which really created a wonderful portrait of Western North Carolina. Um, of that, the curatorial team selected 28 images, which I can say was very, very difficult. Um, there were some really wonderful images that came out of the project, so it was very difficult to narrow it down, only 28 images for the show. Um, but basically, what we were looking for in, uh, you know, in terms of selecting certain images First and foremost, we were looking for uh, images that were very visually striking. And just to show you an example of that, um, this image of um, a construction site in Colby, North Carolina was a perfect example. So in this image, you know, it, it's wonderfully abstract, uh, which we loved about it. And you know, it's this wonderful composition, it has great color, great textures. Um, you have this element that uh, is very unique to our region, which is uh, that we have uh, this kind of brightly orange colored clay uh, soil. And then um, it was also important that, it, that these images tell an important story about our region or bring up um, an important environmental issue. And in this case, uh, that issue is uh, erosion control um, because over the last few years, we have had a number of instances in this region 
of you know sort of sediment uh, runoff from a construction site, um, you know, kind of getting away from the site and polluting our uh, you know our streams, our rivers, our waterways. Um, and this is a real issue in this region. So this image, I think, really pointed to um, the importance of erosion control um, on our construction sites or where we're developing land. Um, so it was a great combination of both of those elements. Uh, this is another image in the show, which um, again is this beautifully abstract image. And you know, one of the things we were also looking for in selecting these images was um, images that were a little bit mysterious. You know, there was a little bit of mystery to them. They were somewhat enigmatic. Um, you know, and in this case, you know, this landfill cover tarp. I mean, it's so beautifully abstract, you, you wouldn't even know that you were looking at a landfill cover tarp, you know, unless you read the, the gallery label. Um, but the wonderful thing about this image is that it makes you as a viewer ask questions, you know, so we really wanted people to look at these images and to say, you know, what exactly am I looking at, you know, or where is this located? Um, you know, what sort of human behavior um, is this exhibiting? And, um, you know, it was important to sort of raise those questions so that, you know, our viewers could go out in the world and also ask their own questions about the land around them. Um, you know, in this case, I think with, you know, landfills and waste um, is highlighted in a couple of images in the show. And, you know, landfills are often, um, we might know where they are, but they're still sort of tucked away. We don't necessarily see them. So this is kind of bringing it in the forefront, you know, and making us ask questions about the image so that we can learn more about, um, you know, sort of as a region, um, how we uh, discard things, how we get rid of things, you know, what we do with our waste. And I actually, I do have an image here on the right, which is not in the show, but that is a context image for uh, the landfill cover tarp in East Franklin so that you can see kind of a, a broader image. And you will see in the show that many of the aerial photographs, you know, even though you can get that altitude with an airplane, um, we selected a number of images that are a little bit closer to the ground. And, um, in many instances, those were, you know, the more mysterious images, the ones that make you ask questions because you can't quite locate um, immediately where you are, what you're looking at. And that was sort of the fascinating part about it. Uh, this is just another example, this uh, end of season corn maze. And, you know, again, this, this image, um, you know, is a great composition. Um, Alex is actually kind of you know, turned it on its side um, so that you can't read this, um, you know, these letters and this text that someone has carved out of the cornfield. And um, so again, it's making you ask questions, kind of wondering, you know, what, where is this and what, you know, what does, what do those words say? And again, I, I do have a context image, uh, which is not part of the show, but you can see here that it says Darnell Farms. Um, but the image on the left was really selected because, um, you know, there was this element of mystery to it. So from a curatorial perspective, um, you know, the other thing that I look for uh, besides sort of the strength of the image on its own is how it can be in conversation with other images um, that were taken. And this pairing actually is a really great example of that. So both of these images are in the show, and uh, the the image on the left, where we have this power line, you know, sort of, uh, you know, really kind of like mowing its way up uh, the forested landscape on this mountain peak, is, uh, you know, I think when I first saw this image, my first reaction um, was that this was very intrusive to the landscape, and it is, um, you know, it's very conspicuous. There's there's really no effort to hide it. Um, you know, we have this human intrusion on the land. Um, and yet, when I considered it in relation to the image on the right, uh, which is uh, this image of rolling up rows of mulch fabric, um, so this creek sort of running alongside um, these agricultural fields, you know, when I thought about that uh, river in relation to the image on the left, in some ways, there isn't um, a lot of difference between um, kind of these two lines in the landscape, meaning that they are both 
um, you know, sort of forces that are carving their way, um, you know, through the landscape and, you know, making an impact. And so, you know, these two together, I think, really raise the question of, you know, what do we consider natural? Why do we consider one thing more natural than another? You know, why does this river, um, albeit, you know, a meandering line, why does that seem more natural, um, you know, than this human line in the landscape, um, which is, you know, sort of straight and geometric. Um, so it raised questions about what we consider natural and, uh, you know, what we, we don't. Um, we also wanted images that made us think more deeply about our impact on the land as human beings, um, you know, and people living in this region. Um, so, you know, the image on the left of uh, the landfill in Canton, which is so close to the Pigeon River, um, again, raised a lot of questions about the health of our waterways and, you know, how you can really keep the contamination um, from that landfill away from the river. Um, and the same goes for the image on the right with the agricultural um, land so close to uh, the riverway. And the image on the right actually is not part of the show, it was runner up, um, but, you know, very similar to the uh, image that we just saw with, um, you know, the proximity of that agricultural land um, and, you know, those nutrients and fertilizers, um, you know, having the opportunity to run into our river. So uh, raising an important question about um, you know, how we position that type of land use uh, near our waterways. There were also questions uh, raised in the project about resource extraction um, and everything really from, uh, you know, energy use to um, pollution and, uh, you know, agricultural placement. There were some questions about social inequality that came up um, from the images. And also questions about preservation of historical and uh, sacred sites. So um, from the beginning of the project, I think we were really thinking about how human beings in this region impact the land. And as the project sort of unfolded, um, what really emerged was that, you know, uh, we are impacting the land and there are, there are very important environmental issues that we need to be considering um, that this aerial photography was showing to us. But at the same time, um, the natural features and topography of this area, you know, in many ways determine where, uh, you know, where there is settlement uh, in the area, what crops we grow, how we travel from one place to another. So human beings are, you know, shapers of the land. And that was very evident from the photographs. Um, but we're also at the land's mercy, and in many ways, um, you know, we surrender ourselves um, to this terrain that we inhabit. So it was interesting to see that point emerge that the land affects us, impacts us, as much as we impact it. So um, I hope you all have a chance to see the exhibition and that it sparks your curiosity um, about the land around you and the built environment in Western North Carolina. Um, aerial photography, I think, can be uh, very inspiring, very surprising, very beautiful, um, but it can also be a great tool for helping us to uh, make better decisions about how and where we build and what we preserve and protect. So I just want to thank, um, again, the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina and also the staff at the BASCOM for their support of this project. Um, especially Teresa Osborne, Billy Love, and Zach Rogers for all their help and their enthusiasm um, for bringing this exhibition to Highlands. And I also want to thank Alex McLean, the artist, um, for his insights, research, and commitment uh, to the project, and really for providing us uh, with a new perspective on the Western North Carolina region. We are so thrilled that this project was an opportunity to think critically about the impact of human activity here, and um, also the opportunity to celebrate what is truly unique about Western North Carolina.